hour. It is the hour. That's true. It is the hour. You're right. Okay. So everyone, welcome to the second session uh, of the of today. It's Tuesday uh, session number two, national projects. Uh, the central team uh, in this session is collaboration within and across national institutions. My name is Thomas Alatera. I'm chairing the session today. And I, I work for the Finnish Social Science Data Archive in the fields of digital preservation, fair data, web services, and communications. And I just happen to be involved in a number of national projects and collaborations. So it sounds like this session was a perfect one for me to chair. So we, we have two presentations today in this session. Uh, both are co-authored and I shortly introduce the speakers, uh, but a couple of housekeeping notes before that, uh, though none of these will be huge surprises to you at this stage. So for questions, they should go to the Q&A box here in the Zoom. And if you don't know where it is, it's right down there uh, on uh, the bottom part of your screen. And there is also chat. Uh, that's okay for, for comments uh, and questions as well, but Q&A is the primary source for that one. If you struggle with the connection or have any other troubles, then you you probably should go to, uh, to VOA and uh, to the community section where you can ask questions uh, and post them to the organizers, say uh, organizers telling that they need to help you with something. I need to be in my session right now. Right. Other than that, uh, we are getting ready for the first presentation. First, we learn about how collaboration is, an, is instrumental at the University of Oslo to achieve goals related uh, to research data management. And this topic is presented by Margaret Fluis Fodland. Uh, Margaret has worked at the Department of Research and Innovation Administration uh, at University of Oslo, Norway, since 2010, with responsibility for open science and research, including research data and open access, documentation and analysis of major research outputs and scientific publications, and bibliometrics. And research data has been her area of responsibility already since 2013. And this uh, presentation are co-authored by Eiling Stangeland and Andy Barisaker. So the virtual floor is yours, Margaret. Thank you. I will share it with you now. Is it fine now? Uh, we don't see any anything uh, shared at the moment. Okay, then I and we um, hold on. Can you see it now or uh, still negative? This is strange. I'm trying to share. Okay, hold on. Right now, it's look. Yeah, now we see the. Um, I mean, your your view of it, uh, or the, not no. I mean, not not the presentation <laughs> mode, but okay. we'll definitely see your screen now. That's a huge leap ahead. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just going to stop share and start all over again. Sorry. No I'm problem. Uh, I've I've seen this happen before. <laughs> You're not, definitely exactly. not the first one. <laughs> Hold on. Now I think and it's two screens, three. Do you see it now? Yes. Good. So sorry, maybe that took some of my nervousness down. Um, we were supposed to be two that was going to talk here. And uh, so you have been left with me. Um, uh, as um, Thomas said, I'm uh, working at the research department at the University of Oslo. And uh, so I'm not uh, a person that's on the data. I'm like more up 
with the um, uh, strategics and policy makers, but still I know a lot since I've been working with this since 2013. I just want to show you uh, we, uh, my University of Oslo in figures before we're starting, so you can like get a point of how big we are and uh, how many research outputs we have, like you can we have 6434 research outputs every year and data are uh, hanging on to that and that means that we need to sort out our research data as well yes you will get this presentation i understand i just want to start with the the background and the history and how we started to work with research data at uh, the administration, the library and the IT department. We started in actually in 2013 uh, uh, when our leaders uh, at the administration and library asked us to make a note on what are we doing with research data at the university and is there something we need to do because we had heard something from the EU that the, the Horizon 2020 will do a pilot on research data and research data management. So in 2014, we established a mandate from the director at the university and we got a working group. And the working group was from uh, uh, several units at the University of Oslo. And we, we were happy to get the leader from uh, the research team at the uh, Faculty of Mathematics and Natural Science. Uh, the secretary uh, was members from the IT department, the library and the research administrations. And I was the members from the research administrations. I can say that um, this is a paper or um, about uh, collaborations, uh, across, uh, collaborations between uh, the IT and the library and the research administration. And I can say that we had um, difficulty to get the IT department to see the needs here to make this uh, report and to uh, uh, look at this uh, uh, team uh, because um, they had a lot of storage a lot of storage they didn't see the needs to do something else with research data and uh, so it was a lot of talking there i don't know if you have had the same difficulties with the the it department uh, if you're from a university but uh, they are not that difficult anymore and they can see uh, this is really important and then you also can see that the report uh, the data explosion and the major challenge, a great opportunity, was uh, the report that came out of this work. Uh, we also had uh, made a model there and how we saw for us how the researchers were working on the data and uh, uh, how it's going from active data to project data up to archive data and then up again to the be discovered. So this is uh, normally, uh, the people are saying that it should be the, own, the other way around, but we were looking at this as a desktop with the active data, and then we saw a shelf uh, of how we are using the project data, and, how, and then they're storing, and then how they're archived, and then we need to find them again or leave them up there. Uh, the report proposal uh, proposed also uh, something that we needed to do to get ready for uh, the, the demands and the mandatory uh, from the uh, un um, European, uh, from EU and also from the Norwegian Council, uh, Research Council. Uh, we needed clear guidelines on data management at EU, also a policy. Uh, we needed to have a pilot for uh, competence uh, uh, building on effective research support services. Uh, we need also a, a clear work uh, sharing responsibility, both institutional, national, and international level. Who is going to make uh, who is going to make an, an archive for that uh, special data, or do, uh, and who is going to make this uh, storage platform? That's also going to infrastructure that's going to make uh, you uh, 
possible for you to maintain your research data and to work on, on it and to share it with others when you're working on it uh, and so on. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, and also we needed uh, to, to ensure some key issues that require national coordinated or, or identified so, result. Uh, in 2015, after the report, we wanted to make, go on with the work and uh, we established a competence group uh, that was cross-administrative and the members were also from the same as the secretary was. It was from the research department uh, administration, it was from the library and it was from the IT department. Uh, and we got the mandate to work uh, with an, uh, what we called an advisory board for e-infrastructure. That was uh, members uh, from staff, from academic staff. And that has also uh, been a good experience for us to work with the researchers uh, that actually know what they're talking about and what they need. Uh, this is uh, the researcher here was how we can say more as stars about research data management because they knew uh, they have been working with research data, how to put metadata on and how to share and was really wanted, wanting to do that. And that they can see also what uh, other needs. So that was a, a good start for us in 2015. And we uh, did that um, uh, and was going on to 2018. And in this uh, period, we had a, a three projects going on. We had a project for infrastructure for storing active data. Sorry, I'm sure <laughs> leaning on something here. Sorry. Uh, uh, that was uh, and the IT department that, that had a good mapping there. And they were talking to a lot of uh, researchers and how they were working with their research data and what they needed uh, technical uh, when they were. Um, working with the active data. Then we needed also web pages. Uh, web pages was uh, evaluated. Um, uh, we had them published in 2016 and then we had them published, uh, evaluated and published again in 2018. And we we're soon going to do them uh, more uh, up to date. Um, also, uh, we're starting to build up a course for research data management. Uh, and the first one was more about the DMP as the data management plans, that because that was more easier for us to uh, do training on. And it was like the first thing that both the research, Norwegian Research Council and the EU was demanding. And that was, that was the first that the researcher were meeting if they didn't have, um, if they didn't know anything about the research data, uh, the research data management. Um, we also published pol uh, a policy and guidelines in 2017. Uh, the research team that was the leader for our working group was now had now become the rector at the University of Oslo, and he was uh, very keen on having uh, a policy and guidelines for that. So. Uh, quite quickly after he was selected, we also had uh, um, uh, gotten, he wanted to have this up in his, um, uh, as a, a, a case, and uh, we made the policy and guidelines, and we also had them on a hearing at our university, and then he said, this is what we're going for. So in 2017, quite one, I think it was University of Tromsø in Oslo, in Norway that had a policy just a month before us, and then we were the second university in Norway that had actually policy and guidelines for research data management. Uh, we we were not inventive, so we followed uh, the open standard principle uh, when it comes to access to research data. We put in the fair principles, and we had. Of course, we, we wanted must instead of should, uh, and it's uh, been taken in an account that not all re research data is made openly available uh, because they have a lot of legal, uh, personal legal should not be shared and so on, all openly, as you all know. 
uh, in 2000, uh, then we're in 2019 to this day, uh, the competence group was uh, now uh, closed down uh, because the rector and uh, um, because of, oh, sorry, uh, I need to put you away a bit because you're in my area. Um, sorry, I need to read, sorry. Uh, in 2019, the Norwegian Research Council uh, published a policy on open research and science, uh, and our rector wanted three different groups uh, that should work closer to the management, or that to the rector, uh, and research data management, management was one of them. So from uh, being like quite down in the uh, organization, uh, we were now put quite high up, we were put right up under the vice dean, uh, vice rector from uh, uh, research and uh, innovation. And we had meetings with him once a month. Uh, uh, and we had some um, uh, uh, new, uh, um, sorry, um, <laughs> Uh, we had some new tasks, and one of them was to update the university's policy and guidelines that we did in 2020. And now we have uh, we found out that the definition that we had was quite small and didn't fit all of the research area that we have in the University of Oslo, especially the humanist that was history and uh, um, cultural history. Uh, this a uh, lot of this um, idea, yeah, all of the history uh, um, wasn't feeling that they were or didn't see themselves in this definition. So we did that a bit bigger, uh, and we took uh, a, the policy uh, definition uh, from uh, if you have heard about her, Christine Borgmans, with big data, little data, no data. Uh, a scholarship in the network world is from her book and uh, we put in also the care principle that uh, was the work from the RDA uh, and the in Ignostius uh, group there and we also put in documentation with the metadata uh, in the guidelines yes and it's um, the new group was also supposed to work on the positive cultural change uh, and a good strategy for archiving requirements uh, that the government, the finers, financiers, and uh, of course our own policy and guidelines. Uh, yes. I'm sorry, I'm rushing, and I see I have uh, to, not. Uh, we also had uh, um, a data management project on the data management plan. Uh, we had actually sent out a survey uh, to a lot of researchers and we got back uh, quite uh, many uh, response from them. And also we had a focus group uh, with selected research data uh, researchers and data managers uh, uh, to see what is the understanding of data management and a data management plan. Uh, and uh, I can say that the answers we got in the survey uh, was quite poorly. They didn't understand uh, uh, why should we have a data management plan? Why should we uh, care about data manager? That data management uh, it's only me that going to use it or so on. Um, also the focus group where, because of, if you have heard about the GDPR, also the protection data uh, that was uh, um, came in 2000, the law that was coming in or the protection, how do you say? Um, that was coming in 2018 uh, was also mixing in uh, the data management plan. So they were like 
just thinking about storing and not on, not with how you should share your data at the end and that you needed metadata and so on. So it, we see that we had a job to, to, to separate uh, the GDPR from the data management, research data management. Uh, of course, uh, it's, uh, they are, uh, how do you say, um, they're connected really much, but they are not the same, but it's saying something how you can uh, share your data at the end, but it doesn't mean that you don't need to manage your data when you're doing your research. Uh, so there are um, being like in, in the University of Oslo now, like a saying that the GDPR is like research data management plan. So that this is what we have been working with a lot now. And I think it's because also the administration that worked really close to the, uh, to the researcher wanted a plan to like following up the demands from the GDPR. So they thought that the data management plan were good for that. Uh, I don't know if you had uh, an experience the same as we have, but uh, I think we are now getting on track, but I know we have a lot more to do. But the report from 2019 was like saying that this is uh, not uh, a data management plan for GDPR, it's a data management plan for the research data. And we were also made in this report uh, as a simple template for the researcher that he can start using uh, for what the Norwegian Research Council and the EU will also have like a data management plan that's really difficult to write uh, because it's all in the fair and it's answering the fair questions all the time. Uh, so we made a uh, simple one at the university and for to get the researcher to make a man data management plan and to not think about that it's the GDPR. Uh, we also have a solution. We don't say, but we don't have the demands that should, are saying that the, this is the plan that the university, uh, uh, sh that the researcher at the university should use. Um, I see two minutes left, but uh, it's. Um, also other plans that they can use. We have actually two technical solutions in Norway that we say they can use both, and also uh, the international ones like the DMP online. Sorry, I'm going. Oh, okay. Like two minutes. Yes, uh... I'm going to rush. Um, we also have established courses, courses at, for data management at the University of Oslo. And since 2020, after uh, Corona, we have almost a uh, thousand people that have been attending these courses. So it's been really popular both for, both for the researcher and for the research staff. And actually, I think it's uh, about 70% uh, of the people that have been on these courses are actually researchers. So that's good. Normally, it's a lot of libraries and a lot of staff from the research department that are going on these courses. But now it seems like the researchers are actually uh, thinking this is a good course. Uh, we also have, uh, like we're saying in the text that we sent to the um, conference, uh, a data management network. Uh, and uh, we started. We had one physical meeting in 2020, and then we have actually had four, uh, three uh, on Zoom. And that's it's okay, but I think it's going to get better again when we're going to see each other physical. It's 45 uh, people that's member from now. Uh, they didn't want to be an official network, so they are an unofficial network. And the teams have been now, it's been like, what do we need? what is fair data, and also some researcher that has learned some lessons uh, from what they've been doing. Uh, we have two big projects this uh, uh, year and next year, and that's a digital scholarship center, a DSC, 
uh, at the University of Oslo. This is a center that's going to uh, be supporting the researchers uh, and also uh, coordinating the course and give a uh, response back to what is needed, what is asked most for, and then we will set up course for that. And also we have this fair at UU, that's a technical solution that's going to do metadata simpler when you're doing active data. Uh, this is not my, uh, uh, my uh, no, uh, I'm not that good in this, but I, as you see, this is uh, bubbles, how they are going to see how this is going to be used. Like they're going to either manually or uh, uh, feeding or um, harvest uh, the data from other uh, um, places. And then they're going to get this into this uh, platform and they're going to put their data down and then they're going to be metadata. It's really early in the beginnings. Uh, and what I'm hoping this is going to be, uh, be helpful. Also, I want to take uh, the national uh, work in- Just about out of time. So take the key findings and then we'll move on. <laughs> key findings are, uh, it's really important that the, the, it's, uh, there are a cross collaboration uh, I think it's really important that uh, um, uh, the IT, the librarians, uh, people like I am, uh, um, uh, uh, and also the legal issue should be uh, closely here because uh, if those four doesn't uh, collaborate, we are going to be on our, uh, um, our own boxes and the researcher uh, is going to take more time for him to actually um, uh, be helped, I think. Uh, so um, I think this is the key. Just, I think it's really important to be uh, giving each other information and to be, uh, that we understand each other, uh, what the needs are, and also that that is going to help the researcher to actually do research data management. But this is in the early stage, yes, I think. Sorry. No That's it. problem at all. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, I, I see there was a, a question, but that you answered uh, that immediately. Uh, so oh. <laughs> since there are no open questions, uh, uh, we are more or less going to quick, uh, quickly jump to the next uh, presentation and then come back to these questions but I before doing that I will just say that 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 was all so very interesting from from my point of view and I'll I'll probably <laughs> email you later on and ask all the additional questions because otherwise I'd, I'd be stealing lots of lots of time because this is uh, stuff that I, I I do do a lot as well and it was really interesting to uh, to see that you have actually made progress in many areas where we uh, where I don't see it yet. Slowly yes. progress. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So. Okay, uh, but as I said, while you think about further questions, uh, you can put those for, for Margaret as well, but now we'll take uh, an international virtual flight to Canada, uh, where uh, the presentation Accessing Our Past, the Historical Census of Canada Data Inventory Project uh, will be uh, presented by Susan Mowers, but the, uh, the paper here is by Susan, who is a data research librarian at the University of Ottawa Library, Alex Gindon at uh, Geospatial and Data Services Library at Concordia University Library, and Leanne Trimble, data librarian at the University of Toronto Libraries. And all, all three are playing a leadership role in Canadian Census Discovery Partnership. And Leanne is here ready for the questions and answers as well. And Susan, take it away. Sorry, just unmuting.
And just a second. Okay. And okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Thomas. I'm uh, so pleased to be uh, with you, uh, and uh, share with you our um, the enthusiasm of our project team for our um, historical census of Canada data inventory. I'm going to be uh, 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 starting with a background on our project and on the census of population of Canada and then uh, giving an overview on the current discovery platforms, how interconnected are they and, uh, and what our, uh, our plans are for a more comprehensive platform and then finishing with uh, what our uh, what we're doing now and uh, what are our plans. So uh, our our vision uh, for where we're going is to build an open bilingual Census of Canada research platform. Uh, our project started in 2018 when uh, the Historical Census of Canada Working Group was formed uh, as a group of Ontario University librarians and uh, now includes librarians from across Canada uh, and of course expertise uh, in uh, uh, local expertise. Our uh, project uh, in the future will include uh, research, uh, census researchers and, uh, and, and uh, partner organizations. So why we started? Well, initially we started because uh, uh, we know that there are challenges supporting uh, students and researchers uh, uh, who want to use historical census materials. Uh, there are uh, real problems in uh, findability and uh, issues in uh, user friendliness of the materials. And of course, uh, just such variations from census to census that uh, uh, um, uh, and uh, from platform to platform, there are so many differences. So uh, we know that there uh, is uh, a great level of uh, community interest in this, and uh, we really wanted to um, encourage increased interest in and uh, increased uh, uh, history in uh, uh, peoples and places of Canada, as well as new research. So, uh, what is our uh, what is our census? Well, it's uh, our our biggest uh, and uh, public data source. Uh, count of every person goes back to 1665 in uh, in New France and uh, came together uh, after Confederation uh, uh, to um, uh, as a national census uh, in uh, uh, not uh, not not the full. Uh, Canada as we know it today, but it was uh, a census that uh, came out uh, uh, about every 10 years, uh, published in English and French. And now uh, since 1951 includes uh, uh, Canada as we know it today and is uh, conducted every five years. So the biggest, um, our, our, most of our work started with actually scoping uh, uh, what our inventory was to be, what's in and what's out. And uh, in the end, uh, we identified that we wanted uh, the reference products and the data products and the analytical products that were produced as part of the each census. Uh, so we have uh, uh, um, identified sub collections in each of those areas. And uh, we'll be looking at those in greater detail. And we also include uh, reference products that are necessary to use the census, but aren't uh, produced as part of the census, so that type of thing. And we also um, identified our, um, our, um, our major concepts. So our concept of censuses, of geographies, our authority tables, our subjects. Um, so uh, this and, and uh, the uh, we scope this in English and French because uh, this is a bilingual inventory. The biggest part of our uh, census inventory to date has been aggregate data tables. 
these are, of course, um, either born print or born digital. And uh, so um, uh, that's uh, one of our major sub collections. We also have digital spatial data, um, a really strong collection uh, that has been, uh, we've, there's been a big data rescue uh, project at the University of Ottawa and, and Scholars Portal. So we're taking advantage of that in our census inventory. We also have microdata. So uh, from 1921 and uh, previous, uh, and we have uh, public Statistics Canada started producing public use microdata files in 1971. So uh, those are inventoried. We also have um, a collection of census reference products, and uh, these uh, can include, of course, the questionnaires, uh, manuals for uh, census takers, as well as a wide range of conceptual guides and, uh, and uh, practical guides and uh, explanation about the census. So uh, uh, all that documentation. We also include as a special category of reference materials, maps and geographical reference products. Uh, and uh, so digging for those is uh, a very satisfying and um, important part of our project as well. And um, so if we look at um, uh, what, um, uh, where we're at now, uh, we are getting those materials from a variety of sources and uh, we are helped uh, by census, uh, from existing census discovery platforms. Uh, those, of course, uh, uh, vary uh, greatly. They're, um, uh, they have been produced with, uh, um, according to many different uh, scopes and, uh, and, and, are all, and are searchable very differently. Uh, so those are, uh, so it's, it's uh, both an, um, uh, a challenge and an opportunity. There's overlap between the platforms um, there's not a lot of connection between the platforms. So uh, we're, um, uh, uh, our project, we're, um, we're uh, bringing those, those things together. Um, and uh, our, um, our uh, plan for uh, a census discovery platform and, and where the inventory uh, uh, will be the backbone of census discovery is to create a single access point uh, where uh, all the different resources can be found for all census years going back to 1665 in English and French to provide nuanced search tools um, on a number of levels. And, um, and also what's quite new uh, is to provide the search results at the item level. So uh, to identify individual uh, aggregate data tables as opposed to simply um, identifying uh, the larger publication in which the table is found, and also uh, uh, to have a bilingual, because uh, there are so many sources included and in different types of in different types of information. We have a bilingual metadata crosswalk behind our item level inventory, and key to the success of our discovery platform is is to um, collaborate on an ongoing basis between libraries, um, uh, government, and researchers. So uh, what we had in mind uh, after we scoped the project, uh, we uh, did early prototype inventories. And the idea was to um, answer the type of question, uh, such as I want to find what data was collected in the 19th century in Canada about Indigenous peoples, so that, uh, so that we would include um, all various regional censuses uh, in the pre-Confederation period. Uh, find and be able to find in, in one search uh, all the different types of materials that um, um, included uh, Indigenous peoples and uh, also to bring together terminology um, so that people could, uh, could uh, find this material. And uh, uh, so that, uh, that was uh, what we tested uh, in our, in our uh, prototype inventories and uh, brought us to uh, ultimately uh, putting together um, for a pilot project and ongoing 
uh, our database into um, uh, ba uh, basically air, uh, a discovery platform and the discovery plat or I'm sorry, the uh, production platform for our inventory that we chose was uh, Airtable software. And what we did was um, we built um, we built this in a number of ways. Um, uh, and uh, Leanne uh, was, uh, is the leader of our inventory project. And uh, the main table in our database are the census items themselves. So as you can see, we've got the um, individual item levels and we have uh, description, uh, 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 our metadata um, that the inventory volunteers and students fill out is on this main table of census items. And there are um, links between this, uh, for example, English record that you see highlighted here, the, the, the um, identifier number links to the French record, the equivalent French record and, and vice versa. So that's the, the main part of our database is the, are the census items. And uh, in relation to the census items uh, main table, we have a number of authority lists. Uh, and this one, uh, for example, um, is our authority list of geographic units. So whenever we're inventorying an item, we give, um, we identify the geographic units that are, uh, that are being uh, treated. And so this uh, authority list we've built so it includes um, the recognized authorities and also for the, um, it also gives the, um, uh, for example, the terms that were used but are no longer used, um, gives the reference to the, the, uh, the current uh, geographic unit. And uh, these are presented as pull down lists in the main table for inventory volunteers and students. Um, and all our inventory, all, all our authority lists are, are bilingual. Uh, likewise, we have a subject authority list uh, in English and French. And uh, uh, so this is uh, really, really important for, for searching uh, across censuses uh, to be able to retrieve information. The, the amount of uh, var variation in language is astounding from census to census. So we're really uh, 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 putting a lot of emphasis on, on our subjects in our inventory. And uh, you can, um, so, and this also appears as a pick list for the inventory volunteers and students. And we use a number of research sources for a subject list, um, including, uh, for example, um, uh, census uh, dictionary here, you see an appendix from uh, a census dictionary on when the first time um, a subject was treated and we, we look at the questionnaires, of course, as well. And uh, putting everything together is our metadata, metadata schema. So you can see in the middle here, our main table of census items that the inventory volunteers use. And linked to this are the authority lists that we've discussed. So uh, you can see just to the left, uh, we have our subjects. Uh, we also have um, an authority list of census years, uh, types of content. So that would be um, you know, our different uh, reference sources and data types and so on. Uh, we have uh, as well, um, we have not in addition to geographic unit, we have geographic coverage. So how much of Canada did that particular census cover? We also have an authority list of authors and producers, and we have some additional pick lists like formats and language. So that puts everything, uh, brings everything together. And there's a link at the bottom um, uh, where you can also look at this metadata schema in French. So that just links to our, our GitHub website. Um, uh, brought to us by uh, Sandra Sawchuk at, at St. Mary's in Nova Scotia. So then um, uh, where are we now? Uh, we have in 2021, we completed a, a national pilot inventory and uh, using um, inventory volunteers from across Canada with uh, local 
uh, census expertise, so expertise in their own in their home uh, provinces. And uh, we also, um, so we were able to complete uh, 20 census years. And we also tested and uh, completed uh, bilingual training materials, uh, both a guide and, uh, and videos, uh, led again by uh, Leanne Trimble from the University of Toronto. And we are, um, so we are facilitating an informal network of, of people with uh, census expertise. We're uh, growing that, uh, that network. And uh, we have uh, submitted a grant proposal uh, to develop a proof of concept a bilingual discovery portal uh, building on this inventory. So that, uh, that uh, is pending. Our plans, um, uh, we'll talk about our plans on three levels, uh, building our network. So we, uh, our Historical Census of Canada working group is um, uh, developing into a steering group to oversee the project uh, to uh, guide our partnerships and uh, provide uh, um, uh, uh, communication about the project. We have our ongoing um, and growing inventory completion team uh, compiling the inventory, sharing expertise among the members, and also uh, building those important authority lists. And we're looking for experts as well, census researchers as well, to help us with that. Um, and uh, so that uh, is ongoing work, completing that inventory in the next two years. Um, and we're also, our new group are, is our user needs group that we're putting together now. We have uh, Statistics Canada is on board, Library and Archives Canada. We have two census, uh, we have uh, census researchers and we're looking for contributors. Um, so contributors, for example, uh, from other countries uh, who are um, um, aware of, uh, uh, of similar work uh, or um, uh, certainly uh, people from across Canada. Um, we're looking for additional contributors and we are preparing a user needs report um, next year as well as um, stakeholder, stakeholder consultations. So um, as I mentioned, we have a funding proposal to the Social Science and Humanities Research Council, which is in progress. And we're waiting, awaiting the results on that. Uh, and uh, we, uh, so as, that, um, as we're waiting, we're uh, continuing to approach potential partner organizations in addition to Statistics Canada and Library and Archives Canada. Um, and, uh, on our, uh, on our, in our uh, funding proposal, we've also got um, a number of university libraries who are uh, partner formal partner organizations. So the funding that we've requested, uh, that we've applied for is to complete the inventory, to conduct our user needs report, to develop our proof of concept for that research platform, um, one that is openly available, uh, bilingual and uh, 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 crosses uh, all those sources um, that uh, that we've uh, that we previously scoped, and to investigate opportunities uh, through uh, research and consultation to further improve access to the actual source data and 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 um, reference products and so on uh, through um, um, through uh, various means, including uh, digitization. Um, uh, enhanced curation format uh, conversions and so on. So um, I'd like to uh, finish by um, inviting you to uh, contact us, please. We are um, uh, we're very much interested at this stage um, as we put together our user needs working group in looking for um, national census discovery models out there. Um, uh, looking for uh, contacts uh, for the for national uh, census discovery uh, projects um, uh, who can um, help us with um, um, learning about uh, best practices and uh, and also looking for uh, new project partners. 
So, um, or, and, and uh, any, uh, any contribution that uh, you're interested in terms of inventory volunteering um, and so on, uh, we would uh, love to hear about you. And I'm um, uh, Leanne Trimble, who's with us uh, to uh, um, uh, help answer questions during the question and answer. Um, uh, uh, is uh, is the lead on our application to Shirk, uh, and, um, and 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 I'm uh, working with uh, Leanna, particularly focusing on the new user needs working group. So I don't know if that was too fast, or how we are for time. Uh, that we are exactly where I was imagining that we would be. Uh at this stage, uh, that gives us uh, uh, a few minutes uh, for questions before people need to rush uh, for the for the next sessions. Okay. And I, I can see that in Q&A, we have four questions. Um, that's probably, uh, we are probably able to, okay, there might be even more now, uh, five. Uh, and uh, if we're not able to take, take them all, uh, then we, we make sure that uh, we, uh, keep a copy of, of these questions and uh, they either, uh, offer you the chance to answer them here or uh, in the VOVA platform so that the people who ask questions will get, get the answers. Uh, so you'll probably see them yourselves as well, but uh, the first question here is, uh, how did you came to select the Airtable Air table software? Uh, what if any alternatives were considered? Do you want me to take that one, Susan? <laughs> um, so Airtable is really just a working platform for us to compile our inventory. So we wanted a, a relational database system of some kind that we could uh, use remotely with people across the country that was easy to set up, uh, but that would allow us to make joins to all of our um, authority lists and things like that. Uh, and, uh, you know, Google tools were, <laughs> were proving a little bit challenging for us. So we decided to go with, with, with that, which is a, it's a proprietary tool. So we're paying a bit of a fee for access to it, but the goal is to just use it until we finish compiling the inventory. And then we'll export all of that content that we've collected. And when we know what kind of um, tools we'll be using for the discovery platform, we'll load that, that content into hopefully some sort of uh, open database platform that will power the, the, the portal. Does that answer the question? <laughs> I think it does. Um, and uh... I'll jump to the next one so we get uh, uh, get answers to most of the questions. Uh, second one, uh, in addition to having a full run and increased harmonization, are there other advantages you see uh, to this over IPMS? Uh, and, uh, I think maybe just on a very, very high level, I think um, uh, because we're including multiple sources, and uh, um, and types of uh, information, including, you know, reference products at all levels, uh, documentation, uh, and also linking it, uh, linking to analytical uh, products that are released as part of the census. That is more um, um, sort of more cross material than than uh, perhaps IPMS. But we're very interested in, um, I think, for in particular for the um, uh, future scoping. Of, of a you know of a research platform ipums is certainly um, something uh, something of, of interest and, and uh, how that has been built on a number of levels including you know some of the uh, uh, the, the geographic uh, functionality of ipums is very interesting um, I haven't looked um, in detail at either ipums or the social explorer but uh, um, Certainly, we'd be looking for contacts for those two models for our project. Leanne? Uh, yeah, I guess I just I would say that I think that what IPMS is doing is a little uh, more granular maybe than what, what we're doing. We're, we're just sort of compiling metadata about all of the, um, the 
the data sources of all kinds of different kinds that are out there so that people can find them and then use them. So um, I think that content in IPMs would be inventoried in our inventory, uh, but we're not trying to actually like harmonize the, the data uh, at that level of detail. Yeah. That, with my yeah, not at the variable, like at the variable level. So it, it's, yeah, it's more at the, um, yeah. So we're starting at a higher level perhaps. Um, yes. Certainly. So, and that includes our the microdata that that we're inventorying. We're not inventorying it at a at a highly um, uh, detailed variable level, um, but we're looking at that. We're, I mean, that um, we're aware of that longer term. Thank you. I'll. Uh, there's still time. At least one question. Uh, there's one for Margaret. So I'll switch to that one. So we get uh, get her. Uh, <laughs> question covered as well. Uh, and the question is, are you planning to assess your progress to full research adoption of good research data management practices, including data management plans? Yes, we are. Sorry. Uh, I think uh, the um, project that I was talking about at the end uh, will be adopting more uh, about that. Um, so yes, we want uh, good practice in research data management, just not the plan, just just not uh, only the plan. We want everything. Sorry, I have a dog now that uh, in Norway we're at seven o'clock, so he wants to go. She wants to go outside, so she's a bit uh, playful. <laughs> Sorry. That, that too <laughs> is a is a common thing over this <laughs> Sorry. last year. Okay. Uh, I Probably you'll, uh, I'll see still 76 uh, attendees, others. So we'll, we'll do at least one more question. Uh, I think I could combine two. There's, uh, will there be a beta discovery website created for user testing? And there's another question are there links available to the pilot project? Any way to see digital content explore uh, the project uh, to date? Uh, well, we're a ways away from having um, a discovery, um, a beta discovery platform that I mean, that is, uh, that's, that's one of our uh, deliverables in our, uh, in our funding uh, proposal. So that's something that will will be forthcoming uh, when you are there. Yeah, we'll be adding more information to our, our little uh, GitHub website that I think there's a link in the slides. So if you're interested to see it, you can keep kind of keep the tabs on us there. But yeah, that, it's just info about the project at the moment. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we have one more question remaining. Uh, so we'll, we'll take that one as well. Okay, Susan, what a great project. Uh, question one, are you including the manuscript census uh, from uh, forms in the project and to what roles might Statistics Canada play in your project? Yes. Well, we are um, yes and no um, regarding the the um, the manuscript census returns. We are not uh, including those at the item level. We are only including these at this point. And and as you know, we are uh, partnering with Library and Archives Canada as well. So we um, but at this point, we are only inventorying the um, census year level searchable databases that Library and Archives Canada produces. So there's just, there's a real, um, there, there's quite a difference between the kind of um, um, archival records that exist for census returns and, and uh, the, um, uh, our, our metadata schema. And, and yeah. All right, thank you. Uh... I see there's uh, less than one minute remaining before the next session is about to begin. So I think the uh, right thing to do would uh, be to give the virtual applause to our presentations at this stage and uh, let people join whatever the uh, session comes up next. And uh, keep uh, keep the discussion going in the in the chat and during the uh, various uh, breaks uh, and uh, virtual spaces 
that we have available for you. Thank you. It was very interesting. And I hope to see you around during the rest of the conference. Thank you. Bye all. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much, Thomas. No problem. Uh, it went well, and uh, we spent the uh, full uh, full hour, which <laughs> which is always good. Yes.